Well, welcome to another edition of the Digital Sports Show right here on islandstats.com. I'm your host, Earl Basden. Hold on. The perfect Earl Basden. Nothing perfect about it. Nothing perfect about it. Uh, what Jay's alluding to... The perfect <laughs> Earl Basden. ...is the football uh, results that we picked last week. Perfect Earl Basden. And uh, it materialized for me this Perfectly. week. Perfectly. Um, no, we got one wrong. I got one wrong. Oh, come on. You're perfect. Yeah, one wrong. <laughs> but that's just one of the things we want to talk about. The football season. We had uh, Vanessa James uh, competing over the weekend. Um, we had swimming start, rugby start. We had a whole host of sports. We had the um, classic hockey tournament conclude. Mm-hmm. But, but let's first get a message from our sponsor. You may have heard, Digistyle is bringing the only true fiber to the home network to Bermuda. But what does that mean? Fiber to the home is the fastest and most reliable way to access the internet. And with Digistyle's fiber internet, the fiber goes all the way into your house. It doesn't just stop at the street. That means you'll get consistently fast speeds you can rely on. Think of it as a brand new internet highway that goes all the way into your home or office and you can be one of the first to enjoy it. Visit digistylebermuda.com forward slash fiber to register your interest in Bermuda's only true fiber to the home network. Well, as Jay was alluding to in the opening segment... Uh, You're not perfect. No, I, I tell you, I, 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 I'm not. We got one wrong. Okay. And you know which one it was? Uh, no. It was in the... First division. First division. Because we both picked Somerset Eagles. No, we both picked Padgett. Both picked Padgett. We both I picked Padgett. You Eagles. Yeah. No, I went with. Um, you remember, you remember I went Padgett. with Padgett. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we didn't see that coming. Not four. Not four. <laughs> come on, Lions. They let it was rain, and you know cats don't come out in the rain. So the Eagles, Eagles don't fly in the rain. Eagles soar. Well, above the, <laughs> above the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Now let's 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 open up with the what forty five goals in ten games. You know what, Earl? And I was glad you opened up with that because that was one of the things I, I wanted to go back and we'll probably do it next week after these week of games. Mm. So let's take a pick up. Let's say after after four games have been played. Mm. Because one thing so far this season, if you're a spectator Go to a game because you're guaranteed to see goals. Yes, yes. Um, you know, we, we talked about that early in the season you might see some lopsided scores. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just dealing with the teams, dealing with the preseason, getting started. Getting yeah. started. Mm-hmm. Um, who knows, young players, first-time players, mm-hmm. which we have seen a lot of people making their debuts oh, yeah. a lot of teams. Yeah. And in key positions also. But... 45 goals this weekend? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it wasn't that far off last weekend. No, no. And one team last weekend scored nine. Yeah. So, um, yeah, football right now. <laughs> guaranteed. Guaranteed. Uh, we haven't guaranteed seen too many, I don't think we even seen a nil-nil yet. I think it was something in the first week. Nil-nil? Nope. Somerset, Somerset and... Oh, Somerset, Somerset and Social Club. Yes, Social nil-nil. 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 Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what's funny? Well, that's funny. Do you realize PHC mm-hmm. have yet to concede a goal? Yes. And Somerset are yet, yet to, to score, score a goal. Yeah. Uh, and that's the reason I took Boulevard because they haven't found that chemistry of finding someone to put the ball in the net. And mm-hmm. that for them has to be a worry. Although they've only played two league games, but they've played two Dudley Eve games. So that's four times 90 minutes of football. Yeah. But also, I looked at Somerset's team and I, some players, influential players, are not playing. The likes of Leo Burgess. I didn't see Leo Burgess' name in the lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, some other little changes I saw in the back line. We ain't got, you know, former captain coming on mm-hmm. at halftime, you know, that then he, he, he shows up and also protects the back line. Even, mm-hmm. even if it's not playing center half, he's playing just in front to show up. And I'm mm-hmm. talking about Trevor Ming. Trevor Ming. Trevor uh-huh. Ming. So. Um, looking at some of those components there, I can understand 
where the why the trades are at, where they at as far as defensively. Mm-hmm. Offensively, I can understand, like I said, with Burgess and a few other players not being present in the team for whatever reasons. We, mm-hmm. you know, um, it's still early, so for whatever reasons. But you would expect a little bit more from Somerset mm-hmm. because they have a wealth of talent, not just in the Premier, but going all the way down. Mm-hmm. So, well, I know are, one if thing. If they are bringing some young guys up, you expect them to perform. Mm-hmm. I know one thing, my good friend Dennis Brown, oh, he rock. would say, but they're the Trojans. Yes. They are the Trojans, and they have to have a heart. Mm-hmm. They have to be, you know, that much better. They have to want it, be determined, um, you know, in our conversations all the time. You ain't looking at, I don't care if you're 16. If you're 16, you got that much more to prove. Well, I mean, that, and that's the, you know, I just think Earl, for the most part of it, I think that's part of the culture. Mm. Um, we, we could talk about this on a social issue or we could sort of in a sporting issue. Mm. A sense of entitlement. Yeah. We, we see it creep in. And a lot of times if it's out, outside of the sporting world and it's happening in your community, in your society, it sort of creeps into the sporting. Mm-hmm. If there's social ills outside, it sort of creeps in the sporting world, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So why not the, some of these habits uh, or, or you know, or these tendencies of of, of entitlement. Mm-hmm. And yes, you have okay. You made the premier division, but that didn't mean you're guaranteed a spot. Right. Right. You know, just because you played every game last year, that shouldn't mean that you're guaranteed every game this year. Mm-hmm. So, but the, these are things that coaches would probably be battling with. <laughs> <laughs> Attitudes and and reality. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know. We also got to think that just because I finished third last year, mm-hmm. but that may have motivated my boys not to say, you know what, we started training um, cup match this year. Well, la- well, next year we're going to train even earlier. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it, 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 you don't know who put on the extra, and that's what we talked about early in the season. Who done the extras in the off season? Definitely who showed up teams. with the numbers. Yeah. Those teams that would have been in the Dudley Eve had a carrot. Because you had a trophy right at the start. PHC and Robin Hood obviously had the charity first. So that was their carrot as well. Everybody wants to win the first trophy of the season. Mm-hmm. It's there for you. It's 90 minutes of football. And, you know, those type of things. Now you look at the teams such as, what, Dandy Town, the two teams that got promoted, and one other team. They would have been saying, oh, Flanagan's. They would have been saying, okay, we've got an extra two or three weeks. Yeah. Because our season don't start mm-hmm. until... So you have that mindset of, oh, what, what got time? What mm-hmm. got time? And before you know it, time has arrived. Yeah, and, and I, you know, it's hard sometimes a coach can say what he wants mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. To, get, to get that mindset out of there. So it, it's going to be interesting how this you know, plays out, mm-hmm. especially going into the Christmas break because still got a good bit of games going into the Christmas break. But... For some of these teams, it might look like it's it's it's. I don't want to say over, but the mm. chances your chances are getting slim by the minute. No, that's not to say that PAC, Robin Awards, and East Lock can, can go continue on the run. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you really if you look at it, the consistency of those particularly two teams. Mm-hmm. If you go over the course of last year, remember PAC only lost by goal difference. Yeah, and they were undefeated at home mm-hmm. all season. Mm-hmm. So. Easy. And Robin Hood was pretty consistent. Um, you know, they talked about uh, should have the basketball keeper of the year. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. But in saying that, you know, Jason's back and go. Mm-hmm. So it's not like he's going anywhere. Right. So it's going to be interesting if you let those two teams get too far ahead, who are you expecting to bring them back yeah. to the pack? No, you got to throw North Village into the, into and, the conversation the, because Norfolk's they've been and, consistent as well. North Village, and, and this is – North Village is, is – We've seen it. Let's go back. We talked about it. Let's go back to under Coach Todd. Mm-hmm. We saw the rebuilding coming from um, Gumbo Bean at the time. Mm-hmm. Gumbo sort of had tried to keep it hanging on. Mm-hmm. But Coach Todd brought in a lot of youngsters and and worked with a system that they can actually play to. Mm-hmm. So you're seeing some of those fruits now where Boyles, Coach Boyles has really... Mm-hmm. Fine, tweak this and tweak that, and mm-hmm. okay, we might play a little bit different here, but it has some options. Right. And we've seen with Village, 
we've seen, with, or let's say we've seen with the top teams. Whereas the system's in place, now we can put in players in and out, mm -hmm. and we'll still have the exact same system. Right, right. I think that's one of the main objectives for a lot of coaches. If you've got a squad that knows your system, Earl, if you're playing left wing, for instance, you get injured, I could bring on Jay mm -hmm. and play the exact same way that right. I play. Right, and get the same thing. get the same thing that I mm -hmm. want that Earl was giving me. Right. So, um, it's be interesting, but the conditions the other day um, <laughs> would probably lend itself to some interesting football. Wow. Not the prettiest, no. but I tell you, most players enjoy it. Well, the one thing I would say, the team of the players that came prepared, and I'm talking about gear, gear um, would oops. have benefited. A total of 45 goals were scored in the combined 10 Premier and First Division matches played over the weekend. In the Premier Division, the PAC Zebras defeated the Dandytown Hornets 1-0. to The only goal of the game came in the 84th minute via the penalty spot. The PAC Zebras were awarded a penalty which Marco Warren converted, earning the home team a 1-0 win. In other Premier Division action, over the weekend, it was the Somerset Trojans nil, Boulevard Blazers two, Crossroads nil, Robin Hood five, Young Men's Social Club nil, Devonshire Cougars five, and on Saturday night at the BAA Field, it was Flanagan's Onions nil, North Village Rams two. In the First Division, the St. George's Colts recorded an 8-2 win over Ireland Rangers at the Wellington Oval. St. George's Colts got two goals apiece from Jerezino Bassett, Jerron Dickinson, and Mackay Simmons, while Donovan Thompson and Jeremy Hayward scored a goal each. Dante Woods and Sakai Proctor scored a goal each for Ireland Rangers. In other First Division play, it was Somerset Eagles 4, Paget Lions 1, Southampton Rangers 5, St. David's 1, Devonshire Colts 6, Wolves 3, and on Saturday night at the BAA Field, it was BAA 8, Hamilton Parish 1. You may have heard, Digistyle is bringing the only true fiber to the home network to Bermuda. But what does that mean? Fiber to the home is the fastest and most reliable way to access the internet. And with Digistyle's fiber internet, the fiber goes all the way into your house. It doesn't just stop at the street. That means you'll get consistently fast speeds you can rely on. Think of it as a brand new internet highway that goes all the way into your home or office and you can be one of the first to enjoy it. Visit digistylebermuda.com forward slash fiber to register your interest in Bermuda's only true fiber to the home network. Uh, what was the score between Robin Hood and Crossroads? A lot. Five. Five nil. And what was the score between Cougars and Young Men's Club? Yeah, I think that was five too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I only asked that because I, I was... Speaking with a young lady last night who's a big fan of football. And what team? Uh, this, is, uh, this is what a uh, lot of fans she is. What's that? North Village. Yeah, I can see why. Why? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, who was a bit disturbed by two different kind of explanations of a football game. Because one, one, one headline had one team demolished another team 5 0, and the other team. Um, um, took care of business. Um, good perception. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, I, you know. Oh, it's perception. It's, it's the language in which, in which I guess it was written. I might call this shirt blue. Yes, shirt blue. You might give it some crazy color. Oh, it's blue. That came out of your crayon box. But my crayon box <laughs> said blue. <laughs> we all had the same crayon boxes. Yeah, okay? Six colors. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the other no, stuff. The one that had twenty four colors would give it a different shade, and yeah, yeah, they come up with what? What's a teal? I a yeah, tea? no, yeah. We had straight six bucks. Yeah, it was brown, black, red, yellow, if green, blue. If you wanted a teal, blue. you better mix that with that green and <laughs> yeah. that blue, and, yeah. some, and you better stop. Yeah, they, they made those mistakes in paint, right? So, so paint. right. So it's all about perception, and mm -hmm. and unfortunate. Well, I was unfortunate, but that that's. I tell anybody, be careful how you read. Mm -hmm. Don't believe everything you read. Right. But there is a truth in everything that you read. Got a point. Not the school was right, so that's the truth. No, 
Well, Jay, uh, this past weekend saw the conclusion of the Bermuda Hockey, uh, Bow Hockey uh, Classic at the PCC Hockey Ring. Hey, who won? Bermuda. Go figure. It, it played into the, <laughs> well, I can reveal it. Uh, after Bermuda played Boston and Laws, I believe it was 6-2. That was game two, mm -hmm. the second day. Mm -hmm. um, one of the tournament organizers said to me, you know what? They're playing right into our hands. I was like, what do you mean? Because Boston at the time was really playing well. Mm -hmm. um, he says, oh, well, you know, we, we strategically put in a party Saturday night and the finals on Sunday. We'll get them there. It's called home field advantage. So say it. <laughs> so done. So done. And of course, because of the weather predictions, they uh -huh. move the final forward, uh, eliminating <sighs> that third and fourth place match um, to allow them to get through the final before the heavy rain really came mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. And they managed to get through it with Bermuda winning 2 0. So, so if I understand this correctly, there was a team that was uh, a foreign team that was um, quite successful coming through the tournament. Mm -hmm. There was a party <laughs> strategically put on the night before the finals. Yes. And the night, the, that night, they knew the forecast was going to be yes. wet. But the party ended up going pretty successful. <laughs> In the libations. <laughs> yes. So, we might not even play tomorrow. So, why just, you know, let's have some fun. But then they brought the time up a little early. Mm -hmm. So, that morning, <laughs> <laughs> rough. <laughs> you see this type of mornings, have you? We have seen this type of mornings. <laughs> We won't call a couple of weeks ago, but well, rough. Yeah, rough, rough, <laughs> rough, rough, rough. Captain, the, the ship is sinking. Oh, yeah, the seas may they, are may rough. They, may they <laughs> take it on water. I need to take on water. But uh, overall, I think the tournament for, for the Bermuda Ball Hockey um, Association. First one. Yeah, was a success for them. And it leads into the classic, uh, the Masters Tournament, mm -hmm. which is just over a year's time, or just under a year's time. Um, they worked out time, scheduling, cars. And, and, and you, you said it. I think that was one of the main, we, talk, we heard them say that's one of the main objectives is, is like, this is the test run mm -hmm, mm -hmm. before the Masters mm -hmm. to get some of those logistic things right. I mean, you can put everything out on paper, but sometimes when you, you got to go through it to see yeah, what you got to do the exercise. Yeah. got to do the exercise. Okay, we have put down probably 20 minutes for transportation from here to there, but you know what? Sunday mornings or Saturday mornings, it might be a road race, mm -hmm. or it might be this, or we might have mm -hmm. to turn to routes and these type of things, which mm -hmm. will lead to a timeline being adjusted a bit. So this gives it up, even though it's not going to be the same time of year. Right. But it gives actually it, it is. It is. It is next year in September. All right. So you are, so the, basically the sports that are going on now will be happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. You could probably go to those organizations if these the same events you're going to have. If mm -hmm. this, is, so you can start working some really fine detail right. information out. Um, Food, food is very important when mm -hmm. you're going to be talking about these trips because you have to feed. When you're a host, <laughs> you have to feed these they're, folks. They're, they're, that's going to be a challenge for them because you're going to have a lot of European-based teams coming that don't eat what the Westerners eat. Well, but you know what? Do you know, Earl? That is something when you travel to another country, mm -hmm. that is something that you have to, you adjust, have to, to. adjust to because mm -hmm. when we travel to another country, mm -hmm. We have to adjust to. Well, I think I, you and I are a little different because because <laughs> after um, a few. Yeah, it all takes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes we need that to get <laughs> over the hills. <laughs> taste, is, taste is irrelevant. <laughs> so, what are you giving me? Hold on, I'll be back in about an hour. Be back in about an hour. Whose stomach? <laughs> yeah. Uh, give me a minute. Let me let me be over here for a second. Yeah. I'll be back and I'll be at the. <laughs> yeah. That be at. Take that stomach and my stomach. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, but that's what happens. And, and you know, um, it, it, it's, I always love to see young kids go away mm -hmm. because that's part of when, when, when coaches take young teams away mm -hmm. to play whatever event. That's part of the culture shock. Yeah, yeah. For them, that, that, that is a new beginning. That's something that, okay, I normally have this, but no, I've got to work with this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh I don't have I normally don't have oh and you get through after that after that first second day mm -hmm. you, you become adjusted right right you become adjusted but if you've never experienced it it's, you know, a, it's a new beginning 
And to say that to some of the ball players, we saw that with the rugby, mm -hmm. uh, the rugby classic that was sponsored by Gosling's Black Seal. Mm -hmm. Some have never experienced it. Right. After their first day. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't going anywhere off your mind. They be huh? all about a dark and stormy. Oh yeah, and a swizzle. And a swizzle. Mm -hmm. Bermuda are the 2017 Bermuda Bowl Hockey Classic champions following their 4-2 win over Boston at the PCC Hockey Rink yesterday. Bermuda was able to avenge an earlier loss to the visitors and did so on a slippery surface in wet conditions. Cam Poland led the Bermuda team with two goals while Jeff Looper and Rob Bailey added a goal each. Dominic Martel and James Bloxon scored a goal each for Boston. Well, Jay, uh, the police week got underway on Saturday. Papa Wheelie Week. Papa Wheelie Week. With the Jim Connor. Yes. Um, at Police Field, hundreds of kids racing around. Um, you know, they had a Papa Wheelie competition yes, and so yes, forth. Yes, yes. But I got a chance. Um, I didn't get there for the, for the heads of state race. But when I did get there, the Premier was still there. Um, he was late too, I think, by design. Um, and and um, Seriously, bro? You, you know what he used? I was out with my wife and children. Uh, who, wrote that, who, who wrote that one for you? <laughs> but he was going to argue that. It's hard. <laughs> she, she wasn't there, was No. <laughs> so if he was out, you got to brought it because that's a family. Wink, wink. I got that, bro. <laughs> I was over my wink, wink. Yes, yes. Honest, no, no. <laughs> honest, wink, wink. Honest, wink, wink. But I got a chance to speak with him uh, to talk about Police Week and the working between government and the police service. This is the interview. Oh yeah, this is it. They just pasting. They just pasting one another. 
He's a thinking man. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? He's just done patient. He's called intending. Basically, you just look at the person's deal in front of you. That's your focus. Just that the deal in front of you. Exactly what he does in a white range. Just man, the back wheel. This is what it is. Big no one that leader. Back wheel. Come on, Dennis. Go back. You don't pass it. Like traffic. Come on, Dennis. You just go back. Kind of irritating. It's a, it's a thinking man's game right now. Yeah, okay. Come on. Now. This and is going to get fast, baby. Now we make the move. Look Rest at the front there. Look at the front there. This is it. Might have been that car, honey. <laughs> Woo! Once he gets warmed up last year, he done a lap and a half, ladies and gentlemen. A lap and a half. Well done, Rick. Oh, wow. Now. Okay. The brother cool. He just laying back. It's a Sunday stroll. Uh-huh. Thank you, Rick. Look at the bro. Yo, you can go around the track if you want. Yo, he has no fear. No fear whatsoever. Go ahead around the track, man. Come on, y'all, encourage you. Give him a round of applause. Look what this brother's doing here. Well done. Well, Premier Burt, you're enjoying the opening day of Police Week here at the Gymkhana. Um, your thoughts on the, the Police Week and, of course, the Gymkhana? Well, I think that it's wonderful that the police give back to the community um, through the events that they have throughout the week. It's for young people, whether to the seniors, and it's good to just be here to support. Uh, the fact is that the government and the police need to do a good job of working together, and events like this can help the uh, community and the police uh, have a better relationship. Now you're walking around, meeting, greeting, and, and watching some of these youngsters uh, display their skills on the bike. Can we see you get a chance at some point in time involved? Apparently I came late for the race. Unfortunately I had a meeting earlier today and I was with my kids. So um, it was my wife and kids were all dressed up in suit and nice things. So we weren't able to make it here in time for my actual race. But I'm sure that next year I'll make sure I'm here on time so I can participate and hopefully beat the police commissioner and others. <laughs> now it's going to be a long week for the for the police because they're celebrating again their, their police week um will you be around at more of these functions that they're having throughout the week just to show your appreciation from the government side to what the police are doing for the community well i'm sure if it's not me that will be the minister for national security or other government ministers but we will continue to support the police in the important work of which they do and we just have to make sure that we work together to accomplish the community's goal of reducing violence inside of our community now, it's been just a few months that you guys have been back in, in charge of the country. Um, how do you think things are progressing day by day? Mm -hmm. well, I think we're on day 73. I would say that um, some days are better than others. Uh, we're certainly seeing that we're making progress. Yesterday, of course, in Parliament, um, we tabled a tax reform commission bill. Uh, we announced that we doubled the guarantee capacity of Bermuda Economic Development Corporation, which is going to give more opportunity to entrepreneurs. And we have 188 people at the Bermuda College, Bermudians at Bermuda College, who was able to get um, training where they, where they weren't able to get training and education before. So we clearly are doing a much better job. And our, our, we were elected to break down the two Bermudas, to provide opportunity to those who hadn't had opportunity before. And on each week, we're making more and more progress. So we're pleased with where we are, and we're hoping to do better as time goes on. All right, well, congratulations. Keep up the good work, and hopefully we'll get to see you on one of these bikes today. Um, I can make no promises. I'm on my way out. <laughs> but if not today, then next year for sure. Thank you. Thank you. You may have heard, Digistyle is bringing the only true fiber to the home network to Bermuda. But what does that mean? Fiber to the home is the fastest and most reliable way to access the internet. And with Digistyle's fiber internet, the fiber goes all the way into your house. It doesn't just stop at the street. That means you'll get consistently fast speeds you can rely on. Think of it as a brand new internet highway that goes all the way into your home or office and you can be one of the first to enjoy it. Visit digistylebermuda.com forward slash fiber to register your interest in Bermuda's only true fiber to the home network. Jay, over the last few weeks, 
uh, the countdown to the Winter Olympics has been well underway. Mm -hmm. Vanessa James from Union Born um, competes in pairs figure skating France. for France. Mm -hmm. um, her and her partner, Morgan Cypress, have been uh, running the tables in the events that they've been in thus far this year. Uh, three events, three podiums, and top of the podiums mm -hmm. they have been experiencing. But just to get that season started. Recently, Vanessa James and her skating partner Morgan Cypress competed in their first competition of the season. The French pair took to the ice to compete in the 2017 Autumn Classic International. They topped the table with a score of 210.48. James and Cypress would then go on to win their first French competition of the season, picking up the win in the senior couple's short program. James and Cypress finished with a total segment score of 72.55. James and Cyprus continued their winning ways as they skated to victory in the French Masters Senior Couples Free Skating Event. James and Cyprus finished with a total segment score of 154.44. There's a there's there was a report I had last week um, that there's a possibility that France may not take part in the Winter Olympics due to what's going on with North Korea, um, South Korea, and the U.S. Um, but I know those two are preparing in the event that France do put their hand up and say they're going to go. But they're not the only ones that are really looking at the situation. Um, there's been a distraction this week mm -hmm. with the for the U.S. Um, mm -hmm. with the unfortunate circumstances on Sunday night, Monday morning in it's Vegas. Vegas. Um, I'm hoping to be able to get a chance to speak with Tyrone Smith later today or earlier today, um, later today. Um, he was actually in Las Vegas mm. um, at a hotel nearby, uh, was not aware of what was going on as it was happening, but as word started spreading through the, the hotel he was at, the hotel was on lockdown, obviously TV goes on, and you know, you're looking out of your window, you're looking to see if you could see it, what that was going on, but just the opportunity to speak to Tyrone, um, about being that close to a situation. Yeah, um, Earl, it's amazing. We t you just talked about a story prior to that, the young lady, as far as the two stories, mm -hmm. perception. We can go across all the types of medias and see it being portrayed as something different, each mm -hmm. one. Each one, yeah. But it's an act of terrorism. Yeah. Whether it's by a lone person, whether it's by a group. And domestic or foreign, domestic or foreign, yeah. it's due to because that is what it is terror. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, I've never been in that situation or of, of that magnitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But many moons ago, I said millions ago, um, I had a privilege to go with the um, you scored cricket to Ireland. Mm. Oh, wow, well, yeah. While they was having their <laughs> challenges, <laughs> challenges. Yes, yes. Belfast. Yes, okay. you ain't named it. And to be a part of a, a bomb scare mm -hmm. at the hotel, mm -hmm. to walk the streets with guns drawn at you, mm -hmm. helicopters flying low all day, being certain as a youngster being searched to go into a movie theater. That never been never happened to me at Rosebank Theater. All the days I ever went to Rosebank Theater, I never got searched. Right. Uh, and we just and just picking back off the last story as a culture shock. So what does that do for the athlete who has put in all the time, hours, blood, sweat, and tears? Mm -hmm. I don't care. You built up strength, but nothing is stronger than the mind. Mm -hmm. And if your mind is distracted by any form that all that you've done physically would play a part right right now <clears throat> some athletes and very few some but very few can actually block it out mm -hmm. and, and we call stay in a zone stay you know ultra focus mm -hmm. but majority because it sometimes they feel the safest thing might be actually competing. Right. But right. it's how we're getting there. 
mm-hmm. how we're leaving there, mm-hmm. how we're going to get food. And I saw a story on it was the, um, one of the um, cable shows mm-hmm. um, talking about the Syria men's football team. Oh, yeah, Syria, yeah, yeah. Where they're, they're still buying, they got to play Australia mm-hmm. to see if they get to the World Cup. Yeah. yeah. Now, with everything that's going on in Syria, mm-hmm. how do these guys still get to focus? On a football game. On a football game. Mm-hmm. When some still are in between two minds to actually play right. for Syria. Yeah. Knowing what the, what the issues are in mm-hmm. Syria. So go, bringing it back to, you know, these guys. We, we talked about another show is that, you know, so many things, you know, you four years. Mm-hmm. They've been preparing, raiding, and training. Training. Hard. Mm-hmm. And then an external force can say, you know what? I don't think it's good for you guys to go. Yeah. It's a safety and, mechanism. And, and and who knows where they are in their career? This might be the last mm-hmm. chance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's it's something that, that will play on the mind. Mm-hmm. Even as they're competing now. Right, right. Because they, they've put in their mind that they're going to be ready. Yes. If that call comes, they're going to be They're going to yeah. be ready. So they've got it, but... In the back of the mind, they also got to think for the family's sake because I'm pretty sure their family say, "Hey, you guys have seen what's going on? It. Yeah. Hey, did you hear this? Mm-hmm, hey, mm-hmm. I mean, they're probably waking up to stuff that you know their family members are more probably more obviously for the best interest of their safety. Mm-hmm. But we've seen that. <laughs> hey, you all right? Yeah. Uh, what happened? Yeah. Nothing happening out here. Yeah. Yeah. So but it's going to it's going to be it's going to be um, challenging to mm-hmm. say the least. Mm-hmm. Um, probably. Good Tyron Smith. This will be his last Olympics. Yeah. This will be his last Olympics. Well, he already said that uh, 16 was his last. Well, his, okay, his last last. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he's having, but he's but, having fun now. But, but, so. Right. So you, but Anything's you know, possible. But you know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it's, 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 if he got himself in shape, he'd be at, but, but, but like I said, keep it in context what it is. The age that these guys had, or wherever they are in their journey, this might be their last competition. Mm-hmm. And whether it's the Olympics, whether it could be the World Championships, whether whatever the objective was in the in the beginning of that season, mm-hmm. there it was to make the Olympics, da da da, qualify this, that, and the other. So mm-hmm. um, it's gonna be interesting. We've got to keep our eyes on it, and we still haven't, like I said, we still haven't heard an official word from Bermuda Olympic Association. They've they've made a statement. Mm-hmm. They've made a statement. Um, they're just keeping their eyes peeled and mm-hmm. their ears open, ears to the ground. Well, I do know in the very near future there will be a press conference with the uh, Secretary General and the Chef de Mission of the Winter Olympic Games. They're in the process of arranging that um, to ensure that everybody's up to speed with what's going on. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it, we'll have to see where the really chips fall. Communication. And, and Earl, I'll tell you something. Even, let's say... And just looking at the, the bright side of it, let's say um, these athletes go. Mm-hmm. There is going to be some extra precautions put in place. Yes. Another story. I go back 1990, uh, I believe 96. I believe it was Atlanta. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I was I was in Atlanta, mm-hmm. and I was dropping people off to the stadium every day. Mm. I can tell you where I was when the bomb went off mm. and. At well, the park? The park mm-hmm. at the time. Two days later, I traveled out to Athens, Georgia to watch um, um, Argentina mm-hmm. um, and Brazil play. Um, oh boy, played um, African team at the time. Nigeria? Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Right? Kanu. Kanu was the right. one that came out right. of that. And actually, they ended up winning. Mm-hmm. But the security measurements now going into that stadium. Basically, you couldn't take nothing. Mm-hmm. Literally, it, they they if they wanted to keep, they basically they didn't even want you to bring your wallet. Right. That's how stringent it was mm-hmm. because women couldn't bring purses. Right. No bags. Um, it was in the middle of the summer, so people wanted to bring umbrellas because mm-hmm. you're in a stadium that that's blazed. No, no, no umbrellas. Umbrellas. Mm-hmm. So, but everybody understood because of what the transpired. Place, yeah. Yeah. You know, couple of, so. These acts of terrorism, it puts so much strain on the infrastructure mm-hmm. because most organizers, yes, they might sort of plan for it, 
but you're really never ready for it. No, no. You can you can be prepared as all you want, but when when things go down, things go down. Yeah. And it's no handbook or script book because yeah. although you do enough training, you're regimented, you're regimented, you're regimented. Mm-hmm. When something else goes wrong, hey, that script goes out the door, you react. Well, and, and what you cannot control and what you cannot predict mm-hmm. if people panicking. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't control how you're going to feel towards that situation. Situation, right. So you just can't have a counselor standing by your side and say, hey, deal with this person. No. Mm, mm. So and you, you all know anytime there is chaos or a panic or something, that can ruin any mm-hmm. plan that you have. Because if first things first, you got to get people calm. Right. So um, first things first, our hearts go to the folks in, in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're very interested to hear from Tyrone Smith. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's get that interview with Tyrone Smith. Okay, Tyrone. Um, obviously, you were in the midst of uh, Sunday night's um, unfortunate incident, uh, but you were in another hotel. What was the atmosphere like during, or when you guys found out what was actually taking place? Uh, you know, it was, it was very kind of surreal. We were uh, at the Luxor Hotel watching the Blue Man Group perform, and uh, Luxor, Luxor Hotel is directly adjacent to the Mandalay Bay. Um, and uh, you know, essentially, right there in the mix of the of the carnage uh, that was going on at the concert. So, um, you know, the show came to its natural conclusion, I believe, at around 11 p.m. And they had the music playing for a little bit, and um, then an announcement came over the intercom system that said, "Due to an emergency at the Logan Hotel, please, uh, the hotel is going into lockdown." And we thought it was part of the show at first, the first time we made the announcement. But then it, you know, a few minutes passed, and we realized, okay, this isn't part of the show. And so uh, I hopped on my phone and started just Googling and looking at social media and read the tweet uh, that there was an active shooter uh, on the Las Vegas Strip and at the Mandalay Bay. And I was thinking, that's directly across from where we are right now. And uh, I started, to, I shared it with my girlfriend, and then I pulled up a video. There's like a video that's gone viral now that's, uh, you know, people running through the crowd and um, someone using a truck to get someone out of there. Um, showed that video to my girlfriend and to some of the other uh, folks that were there to see the show around me. And you can start hearing the whispers. People are starting to talk one more, and you kind of feel like, got the feeling that everyone was kind of finding out because the hotel wasn't telling us anything. Um, they, the people, the staff that was inside, and probably because they weren't getting any information as well, kept saying, you know, we don't know what's going on. We're just in lockdown. We don't, we don't know what's going on. And by the time they actually told us, everyone knew because everyone had been on their phones and um, knew the status of just about everything as the events unfolded. Well, we all know the aftermath of what took place, 59 people dead, over 500 injured. But you then left. Uh, the area yesterday. What was the atmosphere like at the at the uh, airport and heading to the airport because the place was kind of still in a no go area for just general public. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was really it's eerily quiet for for Las Vegas. You know, this is my this is my first time going to Las Vegas, but every you know TV show or movie or music video that you've ever seen, it's just alive. It's just just bubbling over with life at at all times and you know after the show we walked we had to walk back from the Luxor to the Aria Hotel which is about a mile um, away and um, there were obviously no taxi cabs no Ubers and we we had to walk and it was just a ghost town there was nobody on the streets but police some in tactical gear everyone armed and on the alert and no cars and no tourists and, you know, on the way to the airport, it was a little, there was no traffic hardly. Um, and, you know, we got, I, I believe they bumped up our flight as well because they had so many delays or cancellations from the evening before. Uh, so they moved our flight up to get more flights out of there to get people out of Las Vegas. And and the pilots, you know, made an announcement, you know, kind of, a, you know, our hearts go out to all those affected. And I, I want to say, I think we did have, at least a few people on our flight that were at that concert because you can kind of, there was one gentleman in a wheelchair uh, who didn't look like he was normally in a wheelchair. There was two young ladies that the flight attendants insisted these two have to stay together. We cannot separate them. They've been through too much. 
Uh, so, you know, there were definitely some people on our flight that had been there too. When when you find out what's going on and how close you are to uh, as, as bad as things were next door, what goes through one's mind? I mean, you've been on the world stage competing at the Olympics, at, at world championships, but you take sports out of it because now this is this is real life. This is life or death. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I, I, some people know, some people don't, that, you know, my first kind of lifelong dream was to, to be a, a military fighter pilot. And uh, so when I went to university, it was on scholarship, the United States Air Force scholarship. So uh, when I did the junior ROTC in high school and the ROTC in college, and they, they teach you a lot about situational awareness and, and things like that. And, you know, you, you're being taught these things, but I was never asked to put them into practice. Obviously, I did not go into the military. So when when everything started going off and I started reading everything, immediately I just started thinking, okay, where are the exits? Where, is every, where are all these people going to run? Where's, what's human nature going to do? And where do we need to go to ensure our survival? So I was just, my head automatically started thinking about those things. And I was thinking, how can I get myself and my girlfriend in safety? How can I keep us away from the crowd? Because that's the easiest target. And where can we go to stay alive? So, you know, I guess maybe pressure thinking maybe some of that does come from sports some of it obviously probably comes from the military small military background that i have and, uh but that's it i just started thinking of solutions um and not to just get lulled into a sense of safety just because we were inside of a room because um, no one really knew what the scale of of the uh attack was and if there would be more if there were more people so um so yeah no, you've you've gone back, and now you're on your way to work, as people could hear. Um, how do you switch on, switch off? Because you've been through a traumatic thing. Although you weren't directly involved, you were so close that one would say um, you've actually witnessed because you've been through the area of mass destruction of of sorts. Uh, you know, I I, I don't know. I, I I get back to Houston last night, and I woke up this morning really tired, not really feeling like doing anything, and I just said, I mean. I can't get out of my routine, so I went to the track, I went to training, went home and got showered and came on my way to work, and I just wanted to, you know, can't, we can't let life stop. Um, we all have so many things that we're responsible for or that we want to accomplish, and if we, you know, if we stop, then then they win, you know, they being anyone who do us harm or affect our way of life, so um, I don't know, I just kind of have to. Uh, because you can be, you can sit there and watch CNN all day long and, and wait for more updates. And, but at the end of the day, we still have our lives to live. And um, the only way, we, only thing we can do to honor those who have passed is to live life to, to its fullest. And that's a, that's the best way that we can honor those who lost their lives. Well, Tyrone, this is not the first time you've been this close to an incident. A huge day of celebration for uh, for the French and. Some lunatic drives a semi truck through a crowd of people, families there to watch the fireworks and enjoy a good time. And I was watching those fireworks from the roof of the hotel, and someone was doing that, you know, that heinous act at the exact same time. Um, and the next day we had to go out and compete. And um, I would lie, I would be lying if I said my mind wasn't a bit distracted. Um, I mean, being asked to, to compete, and you know, the, the stadium was nearly empty. Uh, no one wanted to be in a public place after something like that, and you know you can you can definitely understand why not. So it just seems uh, you can't escape it. You know, I was in the south of France in one of the most beautiful places in the world, and that happens. And then I'm in Las Vegas, where everyone goes to escape their you know the daily stresses to have a good time and watch a show or gamble or whichever. Um, everyone goes for different reasons, but it's all to have a good time and. You, know, you just you just can't seem to seem to escape the madness, and it's uh, it's, it's it's just terrible. I, I said it on my Facebook earlier that um, I, I don't think people, I don't think the world can can necessarily change because it's in human nature to, to fight one another and for one group to not like another. It's tribal instincts, and we, we have these things ingrained in us. Uh, so change is the wrong word. I think we need to evolve past uh, our human nature and uh, and. That's just something that's going to have to happen if we're going to to have a long existence in this in this universe because we could very easily wipe each other off the face of this planet right now, um, especially with some of the talks 
from some of the leadership around the world. So uh, we just we need to evolve. We don't need to change because we can't change. It's in our DNA, but we do need to evolve. You may have heard that is now is bringing the only true fiber to the home network to Bermuda. But what does that mean? Fiber to the Home is the fastest and most reliable way to access the internet. And with Digistyle's fiber internet, the fiber goes all the way into your house. It doesn't just stop at the street. That means you'll get consistently fast speeds you can rely on. Think of it as a brand new internet highway that goes all the way into your home or office. And you can be one of the first to enjoy it. Visit digistylebermuda.com forward slash fiber to register your interest in Bermuda's only true fiber to the home network. Well, before we end up this today's show, I just want to say congratulations and welcome back home to our Bermudian bocce players. Um, Earl Bayes is still waiting for his challenge. Um, o- O'Shea? You say? You say, I'm sorry. She's not going to challenge me. You I'll beat her. And Mal, um, I got that, okay? Keep practicing. I got that. It'll be just like last week's scores. A owl and a owl and a owl. I only got one. Folks, have a good night from the Digital Sports Show. See you Thursday. <laughs>